Good morning, St. Clair Baptist Church. It's good, it's good to good to be with you this morning, and uh, I see some long distance travelers back here this morning. Uh, some of Jason's family here. That's good to see y'all. Yeah, out there. Always enjoy those smiles and uh, having having y'all with us. Certainly, a, certainly a highlight for sure. Um, it's good to if anybody's visiting with us today. We're glad to. Glad you're with us today, and if you're with us on social media, uh, equally, uh, we're excited there. I'd like to thank Villa again for uh, providing that for us. Uh, sometimes it comes with its set of challenges, but uh, we persevere, right? So uh, we are thankful for that technology to be able to come out. So I hope everybody and trust everybody's had a, had a good week in the Lord. So that's a little different than just having a good week. A good week in the Lord, uh, you know, is kind of what we make out of it, right? So... Uh, looking, looking forward to that. We, um, as far as announcements go, let me talk about some of those. We had um, talked in our last church council, which has been a little bit now, uh, about having a dinner for the Fourth of July. Now, dinner is going to be after our morning service. That'll be next Sunday. So, uh, if you think, "Wow, this is new," it is because we haven't announced it. I haven't announced it, but it's kind of. I've been checking on some different things about setting it up. So. Uh, dinner next Sunday, uh, church providing the meat, uh, so your task will be a covered dish slash and or dessert, and we'll eat after our morning service next Sunday. There'll be no night service then, so uh, uh, so remember that next Sunday, and I'm sure we'll send out some more stuff on that. Uh, tonight service at 6, Wednesday night service at 6 this week. All right, we have any other announcements at this time? All right. You have any birthdays this past week? Where's Cody at? Cody! Sierra. Hey. Sierra. Cody had a birthday. Which one else? Yeah, we got all kinds of birthdays. How great. All right, anybody else? Okay. Well, let's sing uh, and remember Cody's uh, birthday. Now, that was significant to our time moving down here or something, wasn't it? So uh, we, we got to celebrate. Uh, officially, Cody's was the first birthday we celebrated, I think, as we moved into the new building here. So uh, at this time, we will sing Happy Birthday to Friends. All right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. this past week? No? No anniversaries. All right. Well, moving moving right along in about our scripture readers up at this time. Psalms 34 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all fears. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 56 and 57. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Who else do we have? Okay. Kurt? Uh, Revelation 9 through 11. When he opened the fifth seal, I, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which, which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood and those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of, the, of their fellow servants and their brethren, who would be killed as they were, was complete. Right. Yeah. <laughs> sent out the video yesterday about that uh, young man and uh, his life, and uh, sadly ending for his uh, mission that he was on, but uh, his wife also giving thanks to God for, for that mission. So as we think about Christian martyrs, 
around that and I heard appropriately reading the verses to go with that this morning. Thank you. What else? Any other ones? All right, we're going to our prayer list at this time, and I'll read through those and also the ones that we had this morning before Sunday school. I've got um, Cody Ashen, Joe Frechette, Baby Logan, Charlotte Langford, uh, Michelle's Customers, Connor Roy, Kurt Spring Cody, Tina P, Mary Knott's Grandfather, Jim Neeby, Cleet Vest, Patrick and Cindy Smith, Jason and Jamie Wilson, Vicki Cunningham, Curtis Clack, Denise Latshaw, Sue Neeby, Cami Miller, Our Nation, Coley Cranfield, Erlene's granddaughter Nicole, Alan Roach, Mickey's mom, uh, Brother Harold's great niece Latoya, Pauline Brown, uh, surgery on June the 29th, Sonny Bird, Brother Harold's uncle Tommy and Aunt Mary, Sedine, and also uh, remembering Jerry and Janet and uh, Jerry had told us this morning this would be their teen camp this week and tell us in the Sunday school have about 60 plus uh, teens in that camp and he had asked special prayer, he and Janet both uh, for those uh, efforts this week. So, uh, Nina Daniel, Russ and Carol, Rebecca Foster, Colton's friend Garrett, Woodrow Sneed, Thelma Wood, Beth Sherrill's parents, Hazel Henry, Mary Hill, Stanley Cunningham, Harold Goins, uh, Earl Wright, now, Earl's uh, in ICU and continue prayers for for, for him. Uh, Kurt's friend Rudy, Unspokens, James and Janelle Stennett, Kenny Ebbett, Mildred and Doug Houston, Ron Masterson, Pat Brown, Alan Varner, Pam Vest brother Billy, Matt Cranfield, Mrs. T, Misty Langley, Kurt Smith, Landon Hampton, Shirley Reed, Carolyn Hare, Janet Kilby, Jonathan Harrison, um, Riley, 10 year old girl with cancer, Stacy Newby, Alvin Harrison, Jeff Island's mother, remember in, uh, Holly Mize, also Connie's office staff, Bonnie Johnson, whose uh, husband Paula passed away, Colton Ev Evans, Edwards, sorry, I got this mixed up right here. I was just talking to him. He's making it hard on his mom and dad. He's going back to back to school again today, so <laughs> he's not putting pressure on you, Cole. Um Mary Brockett, who we've just been praying there for her shoulder uh, recovery, but she's uh, taking a fall and got a broken rib and back now, so continued prayers for Mary. And then uh, also Sam Olson, the Jim Newby had asked we put him on the prayer list. Right. So what else do we have at this time? So if you're watching this morning via social media, we're having some technical difficulties. And by the way, we're trying to uh, figure out some uh, better solutions.
I sound sound good as always this morning. I always get to hear those congregational songs. I remember uh, somebody being asked what their favorite song was. It's like any song that the congregation sings together. (laughs) That was quite a a good reply with that one. So, just the opposite of that would be one that you might want to sing by yourself this morning or with a group. Well, we'll, uh, at this time, invite Brother Tate up to sing one for you. talent shows about singing, they say the, you do your best when you sing from the heart. You know, if you can have some kind of connection uh, with the song, and uh, you know, as Tate shared with us, uh, he wanted to give back to the Lord with his talents there and singing from the heart. And uh, Sounded good, Tate. We appreciate you, buddy. So, uh, Alright, who else might have a song for us this morning? Alright. Great opportunity. So, we will Turn it over to Brother Jim at this time. It is good to see you this morning and for us to be in God's house together. Uh, His family, and what a privilege it is to be a part of His family. This morning I want us to look at our scripture today and uh, look at our message and uh, look at it a little differently than we generally do because um, the thought, can you walk with me? Jesus was talking with his disciples. It was an important time as he relates this to scripture we see in Matthew uh, 16, 24, and 25, but also appears in uh, Luke 9, 23 through 26, and Mark 8, 34 through 36. Jesus was talking to his disciples. He was reminding them of something we need to remind ourselves more often. 
what is this we've gotten involved in as believers? It's an important, it's a, a different lifestyle, it's a different way to live, a different way to walk. It's not always easy. I was listening this morning to Pastor, probably one from First uh, Dallas, it was, uh, I listened to him usually in the morning time, he was saying that so many people, as they talk about the Christian walk, say, but it's so daily. You think about that. It's not something we do occasionally, not on Sunday. It's an everyday walk. It's an important part of us. This week is kind of a different week in uh, the way that uh, Christians look at time. June the 29th, uh, Kurt had uh, given me a, a, some information a couple of weeks ago reminding me of this. June the 29th is considered the day of the martyrs. And the reason for that is through tradition and much of what we know about the early Christian church and what was going on, we know about tradition. Traditionally, that was thought to be the day that Paul was taken out to the Appian Way and martyred for his faith. And so martyrs are people that are facing martyrdom in many parts of the world as they are. They remember this. And the Voice of the Martyrs, one of the groups that supports them, uh, tells and talks about the faith that we have. You know, we've been fortunate in our time to live in a nation where we can worship freely. We haven't had to worry too much about things, but as you notice in our day and time, even uh, here in uh, the deep south, corner of the deep south, that you have somebody on security at the back door at all times. We have to think. We have to remember the faith that we are involved in is a faith that is attacked in so many ways. It came quite evident to us in uh, Tennessee this year when a group of kids and their teachers were attacked in their church for their faith, for what they believe. So it is a reminder that this faith in which we're involved, it has a cost. It has a cost in what we do, the way we live. That's what uh, Jesus was telling them that day. As he said, Then said Jesus and his disciples, <clears throat> If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. He was saying, what you're becoming involved in is something that is very worthwhile for you. And it's a salvation experience, but it can be costly. I want to ask you this morning, I'm read you a group of names and see if you remember any of them. Bill Wallace. China. James Philpott. Mexico City. Bill Hyde. Philippines. Mavis Pate. Gaza. Bill Cohen, Kathy Gratty, Martha Myers, Yeeman, Larry Elliott, his wife, and Jean Watson, and David McDonald. All right. These are our missionaries. Then in more recent times are some of those that have been martyred for their faith. Jesus reminds us earlier that sometimes it's a costly experience to follow him, to live for him. But it's a, something that impacts our daily walk. But he gives us hope and he gives us promise. He reminds us that 
though this walk sometimes is costly, that he's with us. And so what do we, what do we know? What has he shared with us? First of all, he reminds us he is our security. He is the one that takes care of us. David the shepherd knew about what it meant to have the faith that the Lord is our shepherd. He wrote it in the 23rd Psalm as it begins, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus, when he came and walked among us, he picked that up. And he began to relate to us that he was the good shepherd. He was the one that came to take care of us. John 10 and 11, he says, I'm the good shepherd who lays down my life for my sheep. What a reminder. He is our security. As I've traveled across uh, the Middle East several times, one of the things that always caught my attention and reminded me of that 23rd Psalm and of Jesus' words was to watch the shepherds as they walk across. They'll be crossing some of the most barren looking desolate area you'll see. And those sheep are right along behind him. Why? Because they trust him. They know he cares for them. They know that he's the one that gives them safety. He gives them that security. And so it's a reminder as David the shepherd who knew what it was to take care of sheep. He says, do you realize that your Lord, Jesus, is our shepherd? That he cares for us. He holds us in his hands at all times. Jesus says, he relates and as he shares with us, he reminds us something else. He says, you know what the shepherd does for you? As he does the Lord's Prayer, he says, he gives you your daily bread, but he teaches you something else. He teaches you forgiveness. He teaches you love and understanding. And only in learning and walking with him and accepting and understanding that that we begin to see what Jesus was trying to tell us. Stephen recognized it. For even Stephen in his uh, death as he was being stoned, his final prayer was, Father, forgive him. Father, forgive him. As we look at our world, we realize our security. Do we look around us in the daily life we walk? and the people that might oppose us, and say, Father, forgive them. And one more statement, Father, help us share with them so that they can understand salvation. He is my security. Those names I read you a few minutes ago, they knew that. They understood that. But they understood the most important thing to them was to lead someone else to an understanding of Jesus of who he is and the change that he can make in their lives how often we need to remind ourselves of that but Paul and his writings goes on and he picks up more of that Paul says I will always follow Philippians and four. 12 through 13, Paul's writing about his walk. And he says, I've learned how to live in humble means. I've learned to live in prosperity. I've learned both of abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Paul realized the importance of what walking with Jesus did. What it did for him. And my work across the years, one of the things that I was privileged to be at was a number of missionary appointment services. And to listen to them share why they were there. They always had several that would speak, although it might be 40 or 50 being appointed. And they would talk about what God wanted them to do. And their one hope and their one dream was to be able to tell someone else about Jesus to lead them to an understanding of that and that what goes on. 
when I was in Iraq, up in the northern part of up in Erbil. One of the days we weren't working, we were trying to work with the Kurdish Christians who had come back in after uh, Saddam had been deposed. They came back for the first time feeling that they might have a chance to survive. They had nothing. Everything they had had, they had lost. And they were building little shacks in buildings that Saddam had uh, blown up in years gone by. They would get up some of the three and four stories and you would see the little shacks built on the side of them. But you know as they did, they were looking and it was November then. They knew winter would soon be coming. But they were preparing themselves because they believed one thing. They believed that God would take care of them. And they believed it would come through the hands of you and me as Christians. That we would reach out, we would share, we would be there. And so is the world of the martyrs across our world today. They live in faith. They walk in faith. They believe we'll pray for them. We'll keep them in our thoughts, keep them in our prayers. And what's humbling is they pray for us. They know where the message of Christ came from to them. It came through us, through our giving, through our sharing, through our missionaries that we've sent to the field. And they pray daily that that would continue. That the world will hear and understand. I sometimes wonder, as we gather, as we worship, do we remember all the things that we have been told to do and the way to live? I've been reading a little book lately called Martyr's Oath, written by Johnny Moore. And he talks about the importance of what these people do. He relates uh, one of the pastors that was in India that's been prominent in reaching people. His name was M.A. Thomas. And he, in his walk, trying to share his faith, and a strong Hindu nation was persecuted, tried to stop in another way. He knew persecution, but he knew his faith. He was in prison because he was sharing about Jesus. You would think that that would pretty well put a stop to it. But something unique happened. In prison, he led so many people to Christ. They pitched him out of prison. Because he was a threat to them. He never stopped. He moved after that to Dakota, India. And in the years to come by that he lived there, this is what he did. Now remember, this is one of the persecuted ones. He started 95 Bible Institutes to teach pastors. 61 orphanages. 43,000 churches. Can you imagine what God can do through a person? Could that be us? Could we live that way? He started a hospital, medical clinics, a publishing house in which they were able to publish literature in India in all the languages that are in India. There were 15 assassination attempts on his life. He was beaten countless times. He sounds like Paul. But what did he do? He never quit sharing. Part of the story of him comes out in the Martyr's Oath and the writer of this little book talks about seeing the uh, Christians standing and taking this oath. I will read you just a small part of it because it reminds us of who we are. I am a follower of Jesus. I believe he lived and walked among us, was crucified for our sins, 
was raised from the dead, according to the scriptures. I believe he is the king of the earth who will come back for his church. As he has given his life for me, so I am willing to give my life for him. I will use every breath I possess to boldly proclaim his gospel. Whether in abundance or need, in safety or peril, in peace or distress, I will, I cannot keep quiet. His unfailing love is better than life, and His grace compels me to speak His name, even if His name costs me everything. And it concludes at the latter part, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. It's the power of what goes on. The martyrs are what they look at, what they try to do, what they say. Once again, the psalmist, David writing, says, The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? It's a reminder to live out our faith. And so many times, we become so complacent who we are, what we do, and the world in which we live, because we don't feel that persecution so much that we fail to share that message. Just to say, you realize Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Third thing, a reminder Paul writes again. He says, my grace compels me to speak. Love that word grace. Hope you understand it. I know that Robin and I discuss it often. It's a blessing we have that we did nothing to deserve what we have. But Paul wrote the Corinthians, Second Corinthians 5, 14 and 15, for the love of Christ controls us, having included this, that one died for all. Grace. Grace that Jesus died to give us Salvation. I was in the land of discussion. It was 2003. We were looking at supplies that were getting into Iraq at the time, how to deal with them, and it was a large group that was there. So I was sitting uh, one morning and was talking to a young lady that was sitting beside me. Her name was Jean Watson. She was a young missionary. She was in her first assignment going into Iraq. She was so excited and she says, I can't wait to get there to tell the people about Jesus, about what he's done in my life, the difference he's made, everything about it. I still remember that lovely personality of what she wanted to do. She was there that day and committed to going not realizing that three months later she'd be martyred on the road at most, along with three other missionaries that were there. The faith to lead, the faith to speak. Jesus never in any way tried to tell us that the Christian life would be easy. It would be an easy walk, that we could do it with no problems whatsoever. He told us, you've got to take uh, your cross also. What is, what is he talking about? He says, you've got to sacrifice the things around you of the world in order to walk in the spiritual things. It doesn't mean we give up our jobs and all about us. It means we live him in everything we do. It comes back to that daily walk. I was in Russia, uh, it was in um, 2000, about 2005, we were uh, going into the southern part of Russia and we stayed with the missionary family in Moscow. You know, in the early days, the first time I was in Russia, everything was open and you had no problems whatsoever. But by this time, problems were mounting. It was not easy to be a missionary there. But you as they talked, as we shared with them, 
They were saying, you know, it's getting more difficult. Well, what a great challenge it is to share our faith, to be willing to tell us to be able to live that way. How often do you, in your daily walk, feel compelled to tell somebody about Jesus? Just have that overwhelming impulse to say, it's my time to share. It's my time to reach out. It's my time to tell. Because that person that you're reaching out to, it may be, you may be the last one that has a chance to share with and tell about what they do. Paul comes back to, uh, to the Philippians writing in uh, 121. He was talking to him, I must never be afraid to tell what Jesus has done. What does he say? For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What special words Paul gave to us. It's the words that these across our world know today. Every five minutes we're told that Christian loses their life for their faith across our world. Every five minutes. But as I was looking at that, I was reminded, you know, today is Sunday, and probably you can triple or quadruple that number because those are attack days against Christians. That's when they're in church. That's when they know they can be found. A reminder that walking in faith, we need to be remembering these our brothers and sisters in Christ across the world. I was at a meeting in uh, Jackson uh, some years ago, and uh, David McDonald's wife was there. David was one of those that was martyred in Iraq. And I'll never forget, she talked and shared about him, uh, her life with him, which was not very long, that she said the one thing he would always say, I pray I will never do anything that will let down my Lord. Do we pray that? Do we think about it? Do we remember it? We need to remember those that are mine. We need to take special time this Thursday and pray and say, Lord, thank you for the freedom that we have. May we always have it. But Father, we remember those around the world that don't have that freedom. We live in a fallen world. We see it all about us. We see it in our everyday walk today. We know that Satan is an enemy. I mean, the enemy that will only be put away when Jesus returns. So we should keep always the believers in our prayer. We should always give to make sure our mission is that they're shared and telling. Who knows but one day God may tell us, hey, it's time for you to go somewhere and share. But there's one thing we should always remember. We should never cease to tell the story of Jesus. What it's done in our lives. It's making you be that. We need. Jesus said, all things have passed away. All things have become new. You're new in salvation because of him. Don't you want all those around you to have that feeling? To have that understanding? To understand it. Be able to say the words that take some to us a few moments ago in that song about knowing, knowing when he came, when he touched us, the difference it makes. The difference it makes in our lives. How fortunate we are to live as believers. To live in a nation where we can share that. To live in a nation where we can tell others. Next Sunday we'll be thinking about uh, two days before the birthday of our nation, of what our nation is, what it was, what it came to be. And one thing that we need to always remember, we'll be talking about this, 
God ordained this nation to be a lighthouse for him. You look at everything that it was built on. It was built on the Holy Scriptures. You read it in everything that was done in that day and time. Though today it's tried to be denied, we can never deny that God put us as a lighthouse. May we pray that we're always as a lighthouse. Whatever the cost to us, that we will live as it called us to live. Pray this morning that you know him as Lord and Savior. If you don't, I pray that you would take a few moments. Just invite him into your life. Say, Jesus, I need you. I'm a sinner. Take my sin away. I trust you. Come live within me and make me a new person. That's the fellowship of the church. That's who we are. That's what we're about. We are a fellowship that belongs to Jesus with one main responsibility. Tell the world. Tell the world what Jesus can do within their lives. May we always do that. Let's pray. Father, how thankful we are this morning that we can come into this fellowship. Your fellowship of believers those that profess Christ as Lord and Savior, those that walk with Him, that ask Him to lead them, that ask Him to be a part of their lives and all that they do. Father, there is no way to express our appreciation and thanks for what You've offered and given to us. But Father, You've given us responsibility. May we accept, understand, and live in that responsibility to share the message with those we come in contact with. Father, we are in a lost world. It begins right here at the doors of St. Clair as we walk out. Father, help us to deal with our mission field. Help us to tell others to share. And Father, help us to always be aware of those, our brothers and sisters, literally around the world, who are a part of that fellowship. We are one. We are one in Jesus, your Son. Help us to realize that. Bless us now in our time of invitation. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand together. 378. <laughs>
We make the strong name of Jesus known. That the world may know. That those all around us every day know. That Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Bless this church I ask. Bless Brother Jim as he continues to minister here in your strength and for your glory. And we pray it all in the precious and powerful name of our God.